Welcome to Revolution Against Evolution. I'm your host, Doug Sharp. Carlos Rich Gary with you, and uh, Doug, we're going to revisit the Neanderthals, I understand. Is that, is that correct? Well, I was uh, trying to come up with a show <laughs> to title tonight, <laughs> and uh, what I was doing was I was going back through a lot of our old shows, and I was wondering, well, what haven't we talked about for, for quite a while? This is one of them, yeah. And th this was something that uh, actually came up uh, about 20 years ago in our um, discussions on the internet. When I first had our internet website up, uh, I had a uh, guy uh, uh, questioned me about something I had in my book. It was yeah. about uh, uh, mentioned that I uh, had uh, in the eight man uh, area about uh, uh, Neanderthal being found uh, uh, with the chain mail armor. This is your folk book, first book, The Revolution Against Evolution book? Right. right. This, when did you first write that book, Doug? It was back in... 1986 was when the first... Yeah, uh, first, first publication. First, pu yeah. first edition was published, and then yeah. it was revised in 1993. And someone asked, asked me, well, um, what reference did you use uh, to come up with that uh, information? And I had to uh, go back and remember, because back in 1986, uh, that's when I first had it in the book, and mm -hmm. I said, well, that was ten years ago then that I had written about it, and I said, well, what, what reference did I have there? I remember it was in a, uh, in a uh, video uh, by uh, Dr. Michael Girard called Eight Men, Monkey Business, Falsely Called Science, awesome. and that, that was, uh, uh, that video came out. Uh, in the late 80s and early 90s. Right. And so I, I, I then asked the question, well, where did he get his information? And uh, I had, uh, you know, on the, in the, on the internet there was, uh, I had just joined the, uh, the Creation Research Society network of, uh, right. uh, you know, the email server that they have. And they were, uh, they said, well, you know, I think that the, that originally came out of Ian Taylor's book, In the Minds of Men. That was a good book. I remember that. And we met Ian Taylor many years ago at a, at a creation convention. It was right. down, down downstate New, uh, Michigan here. I, I, it was really I nice. think it was, that was the, the Pittsburgh uh, Creation Conference. It's Pittsburgh? I don't remember going. Uh, International Conference of Creation. So I know that. I know. I know. I met him, but I thought it was down in Michigan. But okay. it, 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 either way, so Ian Taylor is where the first reference, published reference in in recent times, came from. But you you've done some more research on that after that. But well, uh, the the question then was, well, where did Ian Taylor get his information? Right. And uh, he actually had to go. You know, I, I uh, emailed him and I asked him, well, well where did you get this information? He said, well. Uh, this was uh, published in a uh, in a Nature article, uh, and the publication date was in, uh, uh, April twenty third, nineteen oh eight. Nineteen oh eight, right? Yeah. And so this was a, a real old reference, and so the question, well, uh, uh, then, uh, and, well, and he actually sent me copies of, of the references. Okay, so he actually had, he had photocopies okay. of it. And I'll, I'll read them, they're kind of short. It says, in, in the February issue of the Bulletin International of the Academy of Sciences of Krakow, Mr. K. Stolio describes a human skull dating from the historic period, which presents strong indications of close affinity with a Neanderthal type so-called Homo ramogenius of the uh, Paleolithic epoch. A skull, it appears, formed part of a skeleton from a tomb in which was also buried a suit of chain armor together with uh, iron spearheads and so forth. In the great uh, development of the supraorbital supra ridges and the notch at the root of the nasals, the skull, which was found at no, Walsfield, Skova, or something like that, uh, closely approximates the Neanderthal type. It may be added that in view of Professor Sala's recent reference to the later to Australian stock, 
occurrence in the Eastern Europe of a late survival of the same type as a matter of profound interest. Okay. And so the article is called Late Survival of the ne Neanderthal Type. And okay. so it, here's the deal is that this skull looked Neanderthal enough uh, that uh, they uh, wrote an article about it and said, well, uh, here uh, the Neanderthal man survived uh, until modern times. Well, <coughs> that that sort of uh, is, for instance, a paradox for evolutionists. And I yeah, I, but it also it can pre uh, could prevent or uh, present some problems for creationists as well if you subscribe to uh, Jack Quozo's book, Buried Alive. We'll get to that maybe later on, but but because uh, if it survived to modern times then that means that those kinds of features can develop in, with not that many years, okay? In other words, those kinds right, of features. Right. Uh, but either way, Doug, I, I guess the thing is, before we go into all the issues with it, but um, have they ever been able to track down the actual bones that this guy made his, his, uh, his, his diagnosis from? Yeah, for one, I understand the, the actual bones uh, got lost in, in the rough Russian takeover of uh, Poland. And you know, and, and i tell you what, you would be surprised, maybe you wouldn't be surprised if you know anything about academia, stuff is getting lost all the time. I still think of the famous uh, Apatosaur, Brontosaur thing, uh, mm -hmm. year where the skull have, had the wrong skull for 90 years because the, 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 the original skull, I don't know whether it actually been lost, but it was in another part of the basement uh, of, the, of the institution and it wasn't until 90 years afterward that they put mm -hmm. the right skull on it or whatever. And so, uh, and that's not the only, there are a lot of things like that, these, these halls of higher learning, if you will, these, uh, these, these education. I know, I, I work for a museum, and it's easy to misplace artifacts, Doug, let me tell you. And one of the big things that happens is you have numbering systems, mm -hmm. and then they'll change the numbering system, and they oh, don't okay. change the old system. So you got like, right now, even in our museum, where I work at, there's probably there's three or four different numbering systems. What a pain in the neck. And you imagine an institution like the Smithsonian or some of these oh, other yeah. ones in, in Europe, it's, it's really bad. Uh, and they'll, miss, they'll put something down and lay it down and it's, it's lost. Um, I guess we should talk about that. I had a little model of a Neanderthal skull we are going to show you, and I can't find those in my own house. Yeah. So that ought to tell you something about misplacing. And that's not even an artifact, but it does happen. So that does, Doug, that does not surprise me, but it's very frustrating when you see that happen, especially when you want that particular piece of information. Um, it's probably laying around somewhere, but who knows where? And that's why a lot of modern research is, su they are such sticklers for provenance and, and record keeping and mapping when they, when they, when they find the original, mm -hmm. play the archeological archaeologists will have grids and then they'll have everything. It's in you know, square six, level two or three mm -hmm. or six or whatever. Um, but once they get to the institution, um, they try to do it well, but Doug, they, they can misplace things. But that aside, Doug, okay, I was just curious if they'd ever located the original, original mm -hmm. bones. And as far as I know, they're, they're probably around somewhere, but they could have been destroyed even in the war, you know? There could have been things lost, but. Um, and, uh, okay. and then there was uh, another article that he, he, uh, he had sent along with it, and it was about... Who, who sent it? Uh, Ian? Ian Taylor. He Ian Taylor, sent, okay. uh, sent one of the living Neanderthal man. And this was Nature in London, December 8th, 1910, volume 85, page 176. And it says in this, the, the, in the Philippine Journal of Science for June 1910, Dr. R.B. Bean of the Anatomical Laboratory, Manila, reports the discovery of a living specimen in the island of yeah. Luzon, which he believes to be uh, bear a close relationship to the Paleolithic type represented by the Neanderthal skull. The massive lower jaw with the square ramus and reading ch uh, receding chin, the low cephalic index, heavy brow ridges, rounded orbits, mm. and large na nasal apertures and high nasal index, Combined with a small stature, muscular frame, and short femur, all approximate to a form similar to the antediluvian man of Europe, Homo heidelbergensis. Uh, Dr. Bean, uh, in the same issue of the journal, continues the study of the racial anatomy of the people of Tay Tay, dealing here with the women 
whom he finds to be more primitive than the men and closely resembling the women of Siberia. The blend type is largely primitive in, in character. An Australoid uh, variety comes between the Iberian and the primitive. Notice how they use these couched words, yeah. uh, these racist terms. Well, they weren't really couched back in those days. They were, a lot, they were a lot less subtle than they are today and, with all the stuff that's been terms. exposed with uh, social Darwinism. Yeah, they, t they try to distance themselves with social Darwinism today. But I tell you, there was no such, uh, no such uh, disguise back in 1910, Doug. And there was a, um, there's an article on our website uh, by Jerry Bergman. It's called The History of Evolution's Teaching of Women's Inferiority. Right. And this sort of reflects uh, that type of thing that went on at that time, that, uh, you know, he had the... Uh, a lot of people taught that the women were inferior to men. Less he Darwin thought, himself and, uh, thought that, you know. And, uh, you know, he, he treated his wife that way. And, and you know, then, uh, then there was a, uh, another question that came up was, uh, well, do, it, does that original article still exist somewhere? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the uh, Polish journal that uh, this article is in. Right. And, and so I had on my w uh, website with this article a uh, question to anyone who was uh, doing, who read the article. If you happen to find this particular uh, reference, you know, this particular Polish journal that they were talking about, uh, could you forward it to us? And uh, I think it was out there uh, maybe a year or so and somebody actually did find that in right. the University of Washington uh, library. And so uh, the original uh, article was in, uh, it's actually in a Polish journal, but the article is in French. Mm. Mm. And so uh, Ian Juby, uh, one of our friends uh, who uh, used to do a TV show like ours, but the, uh, he's been doing other things lately, working on a movie. Uh, yeah. He, he uh, took these copies and put them on his website. So if you, if you take a look at our article, we have referenced that copy of that uh, uh, article uh, on the website. The only trouble is that it's in French. Well, we had uh, one of our other friends, yeah. uh, Lawrence, Lawrence Tisdall from Montreal, translate this article into English from French. And basically what it, what it showed is uh, this whole study you know, of the measurements of the skull. And it was pretty and, well done. Yeah, so it's when I, when I could see. a pretty detailed yeah. uh, type of thing. You know, the, uh, the atheist who uh, challenged me on this, he, uh, he uh, had uh, this uh, logic uh, about it. He says uh, the account about the ne Neanderthal and ch chainmail armor was uh, sketchy. And he says, well, number one, we know that Neanderthals did not survive into the Middle Ages. Oh, that's, yeah, that's. that's uh, and yeah, so that's, we yeah. know that no competent modern researchers, if he examined the fossils, would make that assertion. Therefore, this is the case of an early researcher misidentifying a fossil as a Neanderthal. Okay, now we get to the crux of the matter, Doug. Okay. Why don't you address some of those things? And I'm saying, the, the second point, mm. he's trying to, he's basically makes a statement, an assertion of the point he's trying to make. Right. That doesn't make it a proof. We find that a lot, of people do that a lot of times, so they use He a, assumes what he wants he to prove. He assumes what he wants to prove. That's a logical fallacy. Yeah, and then he appeals yeah. to whether or not something is true based upon the, if an idea agrees with a modern approach. Right. Uh, or modern research. And that, that is uh, a fallacy that I call uh, uh, chronological snobbery. <laughs> right. Is that your own coin? Is you coined that phrase? Chronological snobbery? Uh, I like that from some place. Yeah, I, see, I, I give that a lot, you know? But, uh, uh, you know, uh, it's also a appeal to tradition. You turn it the other way. Uh, and, and so we've always done it th that, this way. 
there's no reason for us to think. Well, then there's what I call the consensus approach. Everybody says this, right. therefore it must be true. And that's, mm -hmm. we, when you're putting it out so bald facedly, everyone knows, hey, I'm using the thing in reverse, everyone knows it's not true. You mm -hmm. know, that we, we can point out one time after another where things that were once considered universally true have been now proven to be demonstrably false. Right. So that doesn't really make a, a proof of, by, that, by that statement. But Doug, here, let's the thing. Um, we, we, since we don't have the original bones to make a modern research, the actual article itself seems to be uh, very competent in what it was doing. I mean, from what, what, what exactly. you wrote in the article, uh, the measurements were taken at certain such and such a time. But let's, um, why don't we address the point that, that you agree with this, David, that it's a little bit sketchy, and we do mm -hmm. agree with that. I mean, we're not going to say that a Neanderthal was found with chain and armor until we find the actual skeletons, but that the article was there and that a guy b believed it was true based on his examination mm -hmm. and the examination as it was written seems to be credible and scientific and uh, very much hold holding up to modern standards of scientific inquiry, you know, and, and, uh, and uh, documentation. Um, so, uh, barring that, we will say, okay, I agree with the, the argument of Sietzi, but let's say, Doug, what if we could debunk the, the Jamie Armour thing? Or what if we don't debunk it? What, what ramifications does that have for creationists or, not, or evolutionists alike? What do you think? Uh, it really doesn't uh, make a lot of difference, you know. And, you know, one, one thing is that uh, uh, evolutionists shouldn't uh, feel threatened if, uh, if it were to prove that Neanderthal evolved, uh, uh, existed in re recent times because all you have to do is appeal to the same type of reasoning that they have uh, that, uh, uh, you know, things like uh, uh, the uh, coelacanth uh, was... Uh, and, and, oh yeah, I see what you're saying, yeah. In other words, why do people, people have come up, why do we still have apes today? Right. All the missing links are gone, except you got modern man and apes, which we're so, or they, and then, of course, part of it is I say, well, we didn't evolve directly from apes an ape-like ancestor. Well, that ape-like ancestor came from an ape, mm. and he was, and for all intents and purposes, some kind of a, an ape uh, creature himself. But all the missing links are gone, so yet we got the ape and us, so, and the same thing as coelacanthum. Uh, 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 that was an index fossil. It was a key fossil at one time. It still exists. All the missing links from coelacanth to, to uh, amphibians to reptiles, they're all missing. So they, 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 they seem to not have a problem with any of those things. Right. So you're right, there wouldn't be a problem with that. It wouldn't really, if you found a Neanderthal in chain meal armor, it wouldn't really, it wouldn't really stop evolutionists from believing what they want. Well, we have monkeys, fish, clams, uh, bluey green algae, and all these have survived for the present. Yeah, and they, they, algae goes back to way back in the way back machine, according to the deep time, you know, and, and all the other things on down. So that really doesn't really present much of a problem uh, as far as that goes, you're going to believe what you want to believe, okay? Yeah, but and of course, uh, uh, creationists uh, uh, and evolutionists actually now really agree that the Neanderthal really has no uh, information, uh, you know, in terms of uh, being any different than modern man. No, it, there's a few. It's a, there's a. It, it's like a variant of modern man, or if you will, modern man's a variant of what Neanderthal. Um, might be might be like Neanderthal has well, same thing with with the with the skeletal the skulls of the Homo erectus skulls. There's an occipital bun. There's a little bump in the back of their skull, which we don't have in modern man. Um, but they have the brow ridges, which apparently this uh, chain mail armor, the, the Polish uh, guys, and these guys brow ridges mm -hmm. in that article in 1810 of those people. Of course. I don't know about you out there, but I, I've seen some people look like hey, I've got some big brow ridges too, <laughs> you know, big some beetle, big beetle brow people. Yeah, I, I had a chemistry yeah. professor that um, you know I thought uh, qualified. Yeah, <laughs> but the reality is, a lot of us are so prejudiced that by modern art, artist renditions or old artistic renditions of the brutish Neanderthal and and the and then the upright, you know, the, the sophisticated Cro-Magnon Cro man. Um, but the reality is there's the, 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 the cranial capacity of Neanderthal is actually, of the skulls we have, slightly larger than modern man, you know? Now, uh, it's interesting, I found also, in the reference in this article, there is a, um, uh, a link to 
uh, the anthropology department of the University of Warsaw, which at that time was uh, a fairly prestigious yes. um, department uh, uh, that uh, did a lot of research. And this Kazmir uh, Stolio was the founder of that anthropology department. And uh, he's the one who wrote the article? Yeah, he's okay. the one who uh, uh, wrote that original study uh, of this uh, Neanderthal that was found in the cave with his chainmail arm. Now, uh, there was a sort of a little misnomer uh, that uh, they thought that it was actually found in the chainmail arm, but the, that wasn't the case. The man, that chainmail arm was next to it? Next to it. Yeah. Okay, all right. And it's also. Uh, found with these spear points and uh, other things. So, uh, but uh, we we do know that the chain mail armor wasn't invented until uh, into the... Uh, yeah, when was that? Middle Ages or... Middle Ages, or, yeah, you know, or, was more prominent at that time. Yeah. time. And so uh, that really gives us a, a little bit of a timeline of, of when this person uh, probably died and, and was buried in this yeah. Cave. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I think that uh, uh, there is a consensus between uh, uh, even evolutionists and creationists that uh, Neanderthal is still modern man and has nothing to contribute to that much to uh, the idea of human evolution, except that, uh, uh, you know, there's a lot of still a lot of people who have. Use Neanderthal as a holdout, especially those who aren't really that educated about the. Well, the fact of the matter is, the most well documented of the quote primitive man skulls and fossils, the Homo erectus or the Homo habilis is really very. You want to talk about sketchy, you know? It's kind of a. And we have Australopithecus, <laughs> which is just simply an ape. Uh, so it's really, yeah, we've talked about Australopithecus. Uh, yeah. Extinct ape, and do we know why it's um, the features? It's a. Uh, uh, it was the tree climber and, uh, right. and basically uh, swaying from the uh, chandeliers. Or that. Well, it, 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 well, I don't know chandeliers, but <laughs> yeah, it's hands and feet are more arboreal than modern chimpanzees. It's uh, curved hands and feet. But um, so, Doug, it, you know, it's it's an fascinating thing because I think you're right because of the 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 uh, historical perspective and prejudice mm -hmm. that have been given to the Neanderthal. Um, but I've been, yeah, I've been reading for at least 40 years, 30, 40 years, anyway, that, that Neanderthal is really not much, if he walked around in a, in a suit and tie, he probably wouldn't be much distinguishable from modern human beings that's for the most right. part. And, and I would say that's probably likely um, because, we, because we as creationists have always felt you have two, you have apes, you have humans. You don't have missing links between them. And um, the Neanderthal, though, as I said, they keep, they keep falling back onto that, Doug, because it's the only one that they've really got some good documentation for as far as skeletal information. That's right, and uh, uh, Dr. Eric Von Fange, uh, who I miss, he, he yeah. passed away a few years ago, uh, he uh, wrote an article uh, years ago called Neanderthal, Oh, How I Need You. <laughs> and uh, you know, I told about how uh, Neanderthal has been debunked for many, many years, and yet, uh, when we say debunked, not debunked that they're real skeletons, but debunked right. as a missing link for between right. humans and, and modern man, or between modern man and, and apes. Okay, so yeah. go ahead. But uh, uh, the evolutionists need Neanderthal uh, as a uh, as an icon. You know, they need him to uh, you know as a, as a mechanism for the delivery of the image that they want to present. You know that uh, the humans are evolving from apes. And uh, let me give you this uh, one last time for me coming right by. But what are some of the implications of creationists if this was a Neanderthal? You know, I uh, found in modern time. I mean, it's possible the chainmail was put there later mm -hmm. on. Probably not likely. It's probably at the same time. Uh, mm -hmm. It's uh, what are some of the objections? I guess we could put into it. And what are some of the some of the possibilities or problems? Uh, for us, I, I've, I've thought, and we, I mentioned this, I alluded to this earlier, mm -hmm. uh, Jack Wozo's book, which talks about the mm -hmm. development of Neanderthal, looks like it's, it's because of the skeletal brow ridging and some of this stuff that happens would have been happening to human beings that lived longer periods of time. 
We know in the Middle Ages they didn't live to long periods of time. Well, so, here's, here's what I have as uh, <laughs> yeah, go ahead, go through analysis your list. of this. Uh, here's, uh, here's the possibilities of what uh, has gleaned from various hostile emails I've received. It says, uh, this, number one, this is a hoax that's uh, per perpetuated by either me or Ian Taylor. You can uh, believe this if you like. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. But uh, you know, the possibility of this is quite low. Uh, <laughs> number quite two, low is pretty much nil. Number okay. two, the reference is sketchy and the original research still needs to be unearthed. This is a valid criticism, yeah. but now that we found the original research, uh, it's no longer holds true. Now, presuming, number one, this is not a hoax, and the, number two, the article referenced the uh, research that was done, one possibility was that the researcher misidentified the skull as Neanderthal. Yeah. Well, that's, that's impossible, but it also makes the point that it's possible someone else to, to classify a modern skeleton as Neanderthal by mistake, <laughs> and that makes you wonder if other Neanderthal finds are modern variants are, as well. And this fits mm. in with creationist researchers. Right. Uh, assertions that Neanderthal is a variant of modern man. And, and uh, they can actually look at the original research now and, and test that. And uh, then uh, another possibility is the armor Four. was placed next to the skeleton many yeah, years right afterward. They do not belong together. Well, that's hardly likely. Yeah, and know. then number five, armor making was a Neanderthal craft. We too would contend that there is no reason to believe that new Neanderthals were too stupid to do so. So once scientists uh, have no data on the intelligence of the, of the no, but we do have the caves with the drawings and things like that. We knew that they have that they were able to celebrate. And so that would fit in with the idea yeah, that the creationist idea that Neanderthal was an intelligent human, probably of great age, that lived either before the flood or shortly afterward. Okay, we got a minute left. We knew there. what other kind of armor it was. It would help us keep the find. And so finally, uh, the overall thing is that uh, you know, this whole find fits in very well with uh, creationist expectations. And uh, I think that uh, this is something we've got, at least circumstantial evidence, that uh, the Neanderthal in, in the chain mail armor uh, helps us as creationists to understand that Neanderthal is no different than modern man. Right. We'll see you next time on Revolution Against Evolution.